Hello Animators and welcome back. Today we're going to work on making our character feel a little bit more responsive to our inputs. Now you might say, well it already responds to our inputs. When we push run, it runs. When we let go of the button, it stops. But one of the easiest ways to make a game feel a little bit more polished and make the animations feel a little bit more high fidelity is to have your character respect as many inputs that the player does as possible. One of the inputs that the players can do in our game right now that we're not really respecting is camera movement. When our character's standing around and we swing the camera around, our character just sort of stares dead ahead and doesn't really feel alive at all. So what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on making some look at animations so that when our camera swings back and forth and our character's standing there, it'll actually look and track with our camera. This is an easy way to just make the character feel a little bit more alive and a little bit engaged with what the player is doing. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can make look at animations. For this class today, we're going to do the most simple and straightforward version, which is to build full body animation poses back and forth and build a blend space that sort of blends between them. In the next episode, I'm going to explore a little bit more of a more complicated approach, which is to use additive animations to do that same thing. But we're going to start with the simple approach first and then build up to the more advanced version in the next class, which has a little bit, a few, few extra challenges associated with it. After we actually build our poses, we're going to go over an Unreal and we're actually going to do a bunch of math. This one is going to be a little bit math heavy, but I'll explain to you as much as I can how all the math works to sort of calculate the differences and figure out where our character is looking at any given moment. So let's hop into Maya first and build our look at poses. All right, so we've hopped into Maya and I opened up that breathe idle animation that we built previously. We're going to save this out as our look at file and just build on top of it. We're gonna use layers, you know I love to use layers so that we can sort of add to this in a non-destructive way without destroying that nice breathe that we already built into our animation. Now we're actually gonna build four poses. You might think, well, why are we building four? We just need to look right and we need to look left. Well, as you are looking right and left as a human, your body sort of moves in different ways. At first you kind of move your whole body and then at some point, you just start, start moving your head only, right? Because you don't like twist your whole body to look around, it's just kind of uncomfortable. So what we're gonna build is we're gonna build a 90 degree pose in each direction, and then we're also gonna build maybe a, a 120 or 130 degree pose where just the head is sort of looking. So it'll be feathered through the whole body up to 90 degrees, and then just a little bit through the body, but mostly the head and neck during that 90 degree to 130 degrees, okay? so. Let's get in here, we'll build some layers, build these poses, it's gonna be exciting. Let's go. All right, here we are in Maya. I've just opened up my breathe idol that I made in previous episode. Now, before we get in here and change anything, I wanna actually save this out as a new file. I wanna make sure that I don't clobber my old work. Uh, I've done it too many times, so the first thing we're gonna do is just save this out as a look at file so we don't accidentally ruin our breathe idol in the, in the process of making these new animations. So let's go to File, Save Scene As, and let's change this name to, instead of idle F breathe, we'll call it idle look at. Okay, now I happen to already have a file by that name because I was testing this out, but you can just create a new file in that folder. Okay, so now anything we make or change in here is gonna be safe, we're not gonna destroy our breathe idle that we already have. Now, I could start trying to rough out these poses even now, but I don't really have a great, uh, uh, guide here, I could kind of follow these lines to see where the 90s and the 120 degrees are, but it's a lot easier if I actually put some guides into the scene. So let's really quick just make some simple planes that will represent the angles that we're going to kind of be looking at. So I'm just going to go to the poly modeling tab here, grab a plane, scale this baby up, and rotate it. We're going to rotate it up 90 degrees exactly. Okay, so I'm just, just snapping this to 90 degrees. We'll bring this up uh, above ground and just kind of scale it, get it like roughly as tall as the character. And there we go, okay? Now, this is gonna be a little bit inconvenient because I can't see my character through it. So let's also quick just change the material to have a transparency on it. So if I right click on here and say assign new material, we'll just make a Lambert. And if we look over here now in our attribute editor and go over to Lambert 2 that we just created, we can change this color to something a little bit more stand outy and pull up the transparency until we can see our character through it. You know, we just want to be able to see the guide, 
but also see our character. Okay, so that when we look at it kind of top down, we can see where see where our character is looking at. Maybe make the transparency a little bit less. Okay, so this is going to represent our 90 left and right. So when we are kind of looking at our character and which direction we want to go, that will represent the 90s. So let's duplicate this by hitting Control D. Um, and then we're going to change the pivot of it to by pressing insert and we'll move this pivot over to the end okay and then after that we'll select this guy again oh we want to select the one that's pivots over there oh come here don't be like that there we go and we want to rotate this uh what if we want to be 120 this is already at our 90 so we need to rotate it 30 degrees oops and I got the wrong one here. There we go. So we want to rotate this negative 30. Okay. And then we're just going to uh, snap it over here to the center by pressing, holding down X while moving it and just sort of snap it to there. Ooh, and I accidentally moved it down too. Okay. So that now represents our negative, uh, negative 120. Okay. And then lastly, we can duplicate this one again by hitting Control D, and instead of going negative 30, we'll go. Oh well, let's go. Uh, what's negative 30 plus? Uh, come on, I got to do the math here. Uh, negative 30. We'll zero it out, and then we'll go. 180 plus 30 is going to be 210. There we go. I struggled with the math there for a second. Oh boy, you just wait till we get to the Unreal side and watch me struggle with my math. Uh, this is why I picked animation, not math. Okay, so now we've got our guides here. Uh, we have our 90s and our 120 degree guides, and we can actually start working on our animation now. I'm going to go up here and turn off polygon select so that I can't actually select those guides anymore. And now we're good to go starting to build these poses. So I'm just going to build one side of this, the right side, um, and then uh, uh, kind of leave you to build the other side. I'll show you what it looks like at the end, but I'm not going to go through and pose out all of these in every single angle. I'll kind of give you the idea and then you can go from there and I'll show you the final version of it. OK, so let's go over here now to our animation layers. Let's get our picker out of the way here. And we're going to create a new layer called R90. So this is going to be our right 90. OK, we'll hit Enter to make that. And we want to add, start adding some things to it. So I'm going to select the cog. We'll take the spines. We probably want all of our arm joints here. Um, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, we're going to want just about everything except for the fingers probably let's grab the legs or the you know the ik foot positions here too and once you've got all that selected we'll add them to this layer by right clicking on that and hitting add and we're going to do our rotate 90 okay so the very first thing i'm going to do is make sure that my head uh is kind of looking in the right direction so i'm just i'm just kind of looking top down here um and uh, rotating it. That's kind of the direction we want to look. And obviously that looks a little bit silly. Um, I, uh, I, I um, was kind of thinking about this a little bit more. And I think I had said earlier that, you know, when you, when you turn your, you know, when you turn 90 degrees, you'd like turn with your, your body and your head a lot. And then when you look around, you'd use mostly your neck. But actually when I stood up and did this, it was almost the opposite. It was when I looked 90 degrees, I used mostly my head and just my body a little bit. And then as I had to go beyond that, beyond the point that my neck would actually push, I had to turn my body, okay? So I want for this 90 for it to mostly be in the head, um, but we are gonna have to rotate the spine a little bit to uh, sort of feel natural when actually looking that direction, okay? Um, and I wanna make sure that as I'm doing this that I'm actually uh, setting a key on this layer and I'm gonna actually bring that key over to frame zero so that it's just kind of consistent across everything. 
Okay, so I think I'm also gonna take the cog and I'm just trying to get a pose that feels, you know, kind of uh, kind of right. Let's grab the neck a little bit. It looks a little bit wonky. Um, oh, that's not the neck. That's kind of the uppermost spine. Let's grab the uh, neck here. There we go. And rotate that a little bit. Oh, come on, don't be like that to me. That's not right. Come on, give me this one. Oh, that is the that's the middle neck there. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now I got the right thing. Okay, we're gonna rotate that to uh, feel a little bit more natural. Um, I think that the spines. I'm just kind of grabbing the spines all together. We can kind of rotate them up a little bit so that as he as he looks right. He kind of stands upright a little bit more, which would make sense. Um, and now my arms are a little bit in an awkward pose, so I'm also going to grab the uh, the upper arms and bring them around here. For some reason, my peeker keeps turning there into some kind of like attribute editor mode. I'm going to have to figure that out later. Um, and grab this upper arm over here and also just kind of swing it out and around just a tad. A lot of this is really subtle. Now to also uh, uh, have this feel a little bit more grounded, I'm actually going to bring the knee PVs around a little bit too so that as the character turns, the knees are sort of turning with it a little bit. And maybe even uh, this back foot a tiny bit actually even will will turn with it we want to kind of eyeball it so that it looks like it's pivoting um on the toe though oh gosh you know what i haven't been keying all those things along the way so i gotta let's make sure we have a key there and i gotta redo that a little bit let's go back to the knee pvs move them over this way a little bit move this guy rotate this guy a little bit Okay, and I want to make sure that that it's kind of looks like it's pivoting on its toe. I'm switching this layer on and off so I kind of see the difference between them, right? And you know what? I didn't add my knee PVs to that layer. That's the issue. Um, let's uh, add them here. Oh boy, I kind of caused myself some problems there, didn't I, by not adding those knees to the layer, okay? Let's go fix that quick here. Um, this was the original position, I believe. And then I changed, or I changed them there. Okay, so now we're back to what we got originally. Okay, back on track. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the knees a little bit that way like we did before. Um, I'm going to, let's see what this is looking like. What do I want to do with the cog here? I think I want to actually move the cog as the character kind of rotates around to the side. I think the cog will actually come a little bit over this front forward and kind of lean back this way to uh, to compensate for that. So we're just trying to get the weight shift to feel right. Now I lost my animation there on the arms because I didn't set a key on that either. Um, so let's fix that up. Uh, oh, I got junked up on the arm there. Something's going on with my arms. Oh, it's just getting crumpled up because because it's all weird. Come on here. There we go. Okay, so my arm was getting a little bit wonky there. Set a key on that. So we're just constantly comparing it to the uh, to the base one by kind of going back and forth between them to make sure that they're roughly have the same feel, but that it feels like a natural motion to kind of go back and forth between them. Okay, so 
if we look at that difference now, that looks pretty natural. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as a starting point. Now I think that maybe this head might feel like it's looking up a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of keep, keep it down a little bit and also tilt it this way a tad to make it just feel a little bit more natural. And I'm gonna grab this like, what is this, like the throat bone and try to twist it to get the neck to be a little bit um, more of a natural shape in that direction it's going. Now, if we look at that from behind, that's looking pretty good. It's looking a little bit, maybe like it's off balance this way. So the last thing I'm gonna do is grab the cog and just move the character a little bit more in that direction. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So it looks like as the character kind of looks to the right, leans back a little bit. I don't love how far that forward arm moves when he looks. So let's just quickly take that from this view, grab that forward arm and bring it back this way a little bit. Okay. There we go, so that we get just a little less movement on it as we turn to the right. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and we're gonna do our uh, one, 120 now, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna turn off my right 90, turn on my right 20, and we're gonna start doing the same thing. We're gonna take the head and try to get it to look now back towards the uh, 120 degree direction. And like I said, we're now gonna go through the uh, spine here and we're gonna add, because this is now kind of, the, the neck has reached its kind of maximum rotation, we're gonna use the body a little bit more to get the rest of that rotation in there to feel natural. I'm gonna take the cog and rotate it a bit. Okay. Probably gonna have to make their character a little bit more upright to make this make any sense. Grab the arms, bring them around in this direction. Same thing here. This arm's gonna come back around behind. He's kind of like looking back over his shoulder now. And now here's where we're gonna probably really have to move, twist this foot a little bit um, to make sense as the character pivots back around. Let's see what this is looking like compared to the base one. Yeah, it kind of pivots on the toe there. And we'll get the knee out to make sense with that. And maybe even this one's starting to turn a little bit as well. Uh, so let's rotate that, translate it a little bit. Let's get that so that it's like kind of in the exact right position for the toe to be the thing that's pivoting. There we go. Okay. Now let's kind of see if that looks natural from behind from this, uh, this way that we're gonna look at. I'm gonna actually pull these guides out of the way for a second. Well, actually, you know, let's just turn up the transparency on them a little bit so that we can see through them a little bit more, okay? Now, I gotta say this is looking a little bit wonky. I don't love how you can't see this uh, back arm at all uh, from our actual game pose. So I'm gonna actually try fixing this now from our game camera a little bit uh, to look a little bit more natural. It doesn't look too bad from some of the other angles, but actually from our game camera, it doesn't look great. I don't love it. Um, so I'm now just gonna try to like give it a little bit of love specifically from this camera. Let's see if maybe we can take the spines a little bit and make the character a little bit more upright. Maybe that will help uh, get this arm maybe back even more. Maybe we can actually add some, uh, let's add these lower arm bits to it as well in here to get that down and out of the way a little bit. And I really wanna see this arm from that back silhouette a little bit. 
So maybe we also put a little bit of animation a little bit onto the elbow here as well. So that as he kind of looks around, he brings this arm up a little bit. There we go. That's kind of reading a little bit better now from the angle. Now, listen, I don't love that this is all now kind of interior silhouette, but I, I think it kind of looks a little bit weird if we put this all the way out here in a way that um, would read a little bit better. I don't know, maybe I'll try it. We can always modify this pose later. So uh, let me see if maybe if we put this out a little bit more and maybe we take the shoulder some too. Is the shoulder on this layer? It is. And get that back as well to match it. Bring this shoulder around this way too to help with this other arm. You know, that's not looking too bad. And from our back pose, that actually looks quite nice. Um, let's get this neck jutted out a little bit to match. Okay, so there we go. We got not too bad of a pose from that angle. And if we kind of spin around it, it looks pretty good. So let's kind of look at the two poses we created now from uh, starting at our zeroed out pose to 90 degrees to 100. Uh oh, we got it to 120 degrees. And they all look pretty good, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the animation, the poses for the other side, then I'll spring back over here and show you it all together, and then we'll export them and get them into Unreal. All right, so I've gone through now and roughed out uh, each of the poses, the right and left 90s and 120s. I'm gonna kinda, kinda show them to you so you can get an idea of where I ended up. Uh, and then we're gonna hop over to Unreal and start putting these all together into a blend space. Okay, so here's just my base animation. Uh, here's my right 90. So you can see that I have the, for the right 90, I have the sort of leading foot rotate a little bit and the character, uh, you know, kind of rotates their body, but mostly the, mostly it's the, the head looking, looking, um, and then you get to the rotate 120 where the whole body gets into it so that the head, uh, since the head's kind of already reached its maximum uh, uh, turn, turn radius, I guess is the word. Uh, and then similarly, when we go the other direction, it's even a little bit more extreme just because of the way the character is already rotated in their default pose. They have to kind of twist, and what I would say is a little bit more of an awkward way to look this direction. Uh, that's the 90, uh, and then as you get to the 120, the whole body has to kind of torque around. And that's a little bit of an awkward pose, which maybe we could work on a little bit, um, but I think it's important to kind of get these roughed out ones into the game uh, and see it in context before we do too much more work on it. So what I'm gonna do next is actually export these. I'm not gonna show you the entire export process because it's just a little bit tedious. I'm just gonna to explain to you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through and actually turn each of these layers on and export them one at a time. So I'm gonna export a idle look at R90 with this layer on, an idle look at R120 with this layer on and so on and so forth until I have all four of my animations exported and ready to go in Unreal. For our forward one, we're just gonna use our normal idle because it's already authored as forward. So I'm gonna go through that process and then we're gonna hop over to Unreal, import them in and get to work on the implementation side. All right, now that we've got our poses finished up, we're gonna head over to Unreal and actually start implementing these into our game. Now there's a couple steps here that we've got to do. The first is we're going to combine all of our look at poses into a blend space. So if you remember what a blend space is, it's basically a, a, a parametric container that can hold a bunch of animations and blend between them using some kind of inputted information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a blend space that has all of our directional looks in it, and then we're gonna use some look at data to drive that when our camera is moving around. So the second piece that we're gonna to need to do is actually some fairly complicated math in our animation blueprint to figure out that look at angle. Now, how are we even gonna do that? Well, what we essentially wanna get is a clean value that's the difference between the direction that my character is facing, literally facing, like that the mesh of my character is actually looking at in game, and then where the camera is facing. So if my camera is looking to the right, like this, if this is forward of my character and this is where my camera is looking, we wanna get the value, the delta between those two. Now the tricky thing is, is that those numbers when they come raw out of Unreal are like world vectors. They're just these like random numbers almost that are that are based off of like world direction. 
I'm not gonna get into all the complicated bits, but the math we're gonna have to do is to sort of normalize that into a 180 to negative 180 value that we can actually put into a blend space and use. If you're feeling overwhelmed, that's fine. I'm not very good at math. Animators, sometimes aren't very good at math. I'm gonna kind of explain it to you as much as I can, uh, but mostly if you follow along, hopefully you'll kind of get to, to understand it, okay? So let's get into Unreal, check around our animations that we just imported, make sure they look good, and then get going with that implementation process. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is make sure that our animations actually came into Unreal and look like what we what we authored in Maya. So I already went through the export and import process. The one thing to make sure that you remember to do uh, is if your character comes in wonky and rotated uh, off axes, make sure you change your import rotation to X90 so that you kind of get the character upright, okay? Um, I'm showing that on the wrong screen. So you can you can double click your animation uh, and check down here in the uh, transforms and make sure that your import rotation is at 90. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of navigate through all of these and make sure they kind of look as expected. You can see that, you know, because we animated on a layer and exported them, we kind of get that breathe idle animation over our new poses, which is great. So that's my right 90, here's my right 120, I think of all of them, uh, this one is maybe uh, one of the, well, I guess it looks all right. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more awkward than it was. I think I was thinking of the left 120. Here's our left 90, this one looks pretty good. And then this is the one that I think is maybe the most awkward just because of the way the bodies torque. So maybe at some point I'll go back and rework this a little bit, but for the sake of moving forward with the episode for now, we're gonna, we're gonna get it all together into our blend space first. So let's start assembling these into a blend space that we can use. So we're gonna right click here and say animation and we're gonna use, or we're gonna create a blend space 1D, okay? And it's gonna make us ask, well, for what skeleton? So let's type in Thor and select our Thor skeleton. And we are gonna call this Thor nav idle look at blend. That's a mouthful, right? Uh, okay, let's open that up. Okay, so there's no animations in here yet. Um, we're gonna go up here to the axis settings. Um, and if you recall kind of from how we made the, the run animation, this is essentially like a container that we can put a bunch of animations into and blend between them based off a of value that we input in the animation blueprint. Okay, so the axis that we're going to, we're gonna name our axis, uh, let's call it uh, point of interest or let's let's actually call it look at angle okay and we are gonna we're gonna get a look at angle that is 120 or sorry that's 180 to negative 180 but our animations only go from 120 to negative 120 so that's what we're gonna put as our range because we only authored right and left to the 120 degrees okay so we're gonna say that the minimum value is negative 120 and then our maximum value is 120, okay? That's gonna change our actual axis here. If you look down here, it's now from 120 to negative 120, okay? So let's start dragging our animations into here. We're gonna put our normal idle F right here in the center at zero, okay? That actually starts showing, showing up there now. And then um, I'm gonna guess, I think that positive is to the right and negative is to the left but that's how we'll build it. And then if it's backwards, we'll fix it later. Uh, so let's pull in our right 90 here and our right 120 here. Now you see that this is actually um, not at the right location. It snapped to 60. We'll fix that in a second. We just wanna get these in here as a starting point. Okay, um, so let's, add, let's actually add an, some grid divisions here. Um, Let's make this like, uh, what does this get us? If we go to 10 grid divisions, that gets us 72. What's this over here now? Is that closer to 90? It's 96. So let's then right click on this and we'll say snap to grid. Click that off and change this to negative 90, okay? Uh, come on. Why is it, I told you not to snap. Why are you snapping? 
just doesn't want to not snap. Okay, well then we're gonna have to figure out um, how to get that to uh, to be where we want it to be. We might actually have to do some math there. Let's see. So if we want, if it's 120 to 120, and we want every 10, we can split this by 24, and that should give us 100. It should give us a value at every at every uh, tens place. So this should now be able to snap to 90. Yeah. So we got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way up to 120. Great. Okay. There we go. Math. Like I said, you're going to think I'm a genius by the end of this with all the math we're going to do. Uh, okay. There we go. We got that 90. So now we can scrub through here holding down shift and actually get an idea of what this blend's going to look like. So there the character looks to the right and then starts to turn. It actually doesn't look too bad, okay? Uh, there's a little bit of awkwardness on the arm there that uh, we can kind of see right there. But, you know, as a starting point, hey, not too shabby. You can see that there's like a big difference in the arm there that we might want to fix up later. But, you know, this is the first time we're kind of seeing it as a blend space altogether. So, you know, not too bad for starters. Okay, let's save this out call this blend space good and then we're going to move over to the blueprint and actually start uh, doing the math part of this to plug into our look at angle. All right, so let's hop over to the animation blueprint for this character and get going on the blueprint. Okay, to find our blueprint, we can just click on our character right here in the in the viewport and over here in Anim class, it's going to show our blueprint right here. We can hit the uh, the magnifying glass and it'll bring it right bring us right to it in our content browser. Let's double click that and open it up. And here we are in our animation blueprint. Now, if yours looks different than this, uh, it's probably just because you're navigated to a different portion of the blueprint. You can go down here and click on the event graph. You might be over here in the animation graph from last session. Let's hop back over to the event graph. If you remember, the animation blueprint is kind of split into two parts. There's the animation graph, which drives all the animations, like has all the blending and everything. But then there's the event graph side that we can use to calculate data, create variables, or basically do whatever we want to create data or values that we can use in that animation blueprint side to actually drive things like that blend space that we just created. Okay, so let's go ahead here and uh, start creating this sort of point of interest or look at variable. Remember I said we're gonna try to get the difference between our cameras facing and our characters facing. That's essentially what we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk through each step of the way here. And if you see me looking over the side here, it's me referencing my own notes because this is a little bit complicated and I wouldn't expect uh, you know, even myself to remember it all off the top of my head. So follow along and I'm just going to try to explain it as best I can. Okay. So the first thing that we actually have to do is get our character facing and get our uh, camera facing. Okay. So let's start with the camera facing first. What we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to search for uh, get owning actor we essentially want to like get at the th get to the get to that controller that pawn level the thing that owns this uh, uh, uh animation blueprint and if you remember that pawn when we, when we went in there and modified the camera before the pawn that 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 owning controller thing is the thing that has the camera inside of it so we got to kind of like point out to that thing and get it to be able to pull information about the camera from it. Okay, now that camera is a component inside of that, that pawn. So what we're gonna do is pull off of this and say, get component by class. And if we do a search here for camera, you'll see that camera component shows up right there, okay? Now, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that it actually gets a camera. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier on about like checking if things are valid or not, because we don't want the animation blueprint to fail out basically if it doesn't find the camera for whatever reason. So let's pull off of this and check is valid. Uh, and then we'll create a branch based off of that. So we can pull off of this, let go and type branch. And so we're basically not gonna do anything unless this actually returns a valid camera, okay? Now, we want to now get the actual forward direction of this camera. So after we've checked that it's valid, we wanna pull off here again and say, what do we wanna say? Let me look at my notes. We wanna say get forward vector, that's right. 
Okay. So this is going to call to the owning actor, get the camera, and get the forward vector of that camera. And we want to use this now. We want to say, uh, get yaw and pitch from vector. So this vector, if we were to pull off of this, like let's break this, you can kind of see how this works. The vector is going to spit out a value in every axis. It's going to spit out an x, y, and z value. Like that's not really valuable to us in this instance. What we want is to just translate that into the yaw, basically this horizontal rotation of the character. So thankfully, Unreal has just a conversion for that, where we can just say, hey, take this vector, which is like really complicated math in three directions, and just give me a single value, which is the yaw, okay? And that's what this is gonna give us here. It gives us the pitch too, but we're not gonna use that because we don't, right now at least, we're not gonna do look at in the up and down direction, so we don't really need that value. So we're gonna promote this yaw value to a variable that we're gonna use later. So let's if you pull off of this by clicking on it and let go in space, you can actually click right here and say promote to variable. And we're going to call this, we can rename it up here in the top right. We're going to call this uh, camera yaw. Okay. And so we want it to set this if this thing is true. Badam badum. Okay, so we've got it now saying get the owning actor, get the camera, check if it's valid, and if it's valid, get the forward vector, get the yaw from that forward vector, and then set our camera yaw. Okay, now we have the camera yaw. What we want to get next is the characters controllers forward facing so that we can actually get the difference between the two. Okay, so we already have the owning actor here, so we can actually do the same uh, sort of flow of nodes, but for our owning actor instead. So if we pull off of this and say, get forward vector, and then we'll do the same exact thing. We can just copy this down here, plug it in, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna promote this to a variable, only this one we're going to call, let's call it controller yaw okay all right so now we have the two pieces of information we need to now actually do the math okay we have the camera yaw and the controller yaw we're going to compile and save this okay for later and now we're actually going to do the math portion of this okay uh, you know, actually, let's do a little test here. Let's plug this in. I'm going to plug this in to on animation blueprint update, and we're going to plug it into the sequence. So after it does all the previous stuff we did, we can plug this into the sequence. If your sequence doesn't have an, uh, an extra pin there, you can just say add extra pin to plug it in. And just for the sake of organization, we can double click on this to create a little control or a little organizational pin here and kind of straighten this out so you can kind of see the flow a little bit better. What I want to try here is before we get too far is actually watching this so you can kind of see these values um, changing in real time. So if we actually right click on this camera yaw right there on the little dot and say, watch this value, same thing over here on the uh, controller yaw, watch this value, we can actually watch these change as we play the game. Okay. Let's make sure that, let me kind of pull this up. So let me see, can I make this? Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. We can see it nice and big there. Um, I'm gonna click on this little arrow and say, watch Thor. So we can actually watching the right character, okay? And if we kind of look right here, we can see that we came into the game. We haven't rotated anything. These are zero, zero, zero. But as the camera rotates around, you can see that the camera value is changing, okay? So if we kind of look here, pull it over, um, this is the value that's coming off our camera. This is the value that's coming off our character. Our character came in facing origin and we haven't rotated our character yet. So it's still uh, at zero. Now, if I actually move my character, you can see that value change as well. And you can kind of see the inherent problem here is that, you know, my character's forward facing is not always zero. It's some vector in world space. So these values are like negatives, they're positives. It's a little bit complicated. And what we need to do is some math to make sure that we normalize that down to like, a set set value that's like, hey, it's just the difference between my forward facing and this camera, okay? So let's press escape to exit the game here. Maximize this again. And what we're gonna do now is actually get our camera yaw. So we can right click in here and say, get camera yaw, okay? 
There we go. And we also want to get our player, or our controller yaw that we just created. And the very first thing, now I'm going to talk you through this. This is going to, you're going to think I'm really smart, but I'm just copying this because I know how to do it. <laughs> uh, as, as, as should you. The very first thing we're going to do is actually subtract these two. So we're going to pull off of this and type subtract float by float. And that's going to get us the difference between these two. And you might think that that's enough. But as you saw, these values can be like, uh, you know, negative 170 and negative 60. And if you subtract them, you're getting just some, you know, super low negative number, right? So we need to do this math to like normalize it into values that are actually usable to us. And I'm going to show you the sequence of this and kind of explain it. But in reality, you know, it's a little bit beyond even me. What we're going to do next is we're going to add we're going to add 540 to this to make sure that it is a positive value. And then after that, we are going to uh, mod it by 360. Then subtract 180. And then that is going to give us our final value, which we can call We'll promote it to a variable and we'll call this look at angle. Okay, so let's kind of talk through what this is doing. I'm not even going to be able to fully explain it. You might think I'm smart and that I know what this does, but I really don't. But what it's what essentially what it's doing by my understanding is it's subtracting these that could be a negative or a positive value so you need to add 540 to it to make sure that no matter how low of a value it is that it ends up being positive then you're going to mod it by 360 to get it into a 360 degree range and then you're going to subtract 180 from it so that uh we get an 180 to 180 value okay you don't really need to understand how this works uh, this is just a little bit of math I've picked up along the way for calculating these kind of POI things and translating those basically like world rotation values into usable kind of like local normalized values. Okay. So just follow along there. That's going to get us that. Now let's watch this while we're playing the game and see if we get a value that makes a little bit more sense to us. Okay. We'll play the game. We want to watch our character. And if we look at this, okay, it's zero right now because our look at uh, from, or sorry, our characters facing and our camera facing is exactly the same. But as we rotate, you can see that now it's giving us a nice clean value that actually makes sense. Look at that, there's negative 90 and it's gonna go around to negative 180. And when it crosses 180, it goes positive, right? Because we're now on the other side. It's gonna be positive, it's like magic. Okay, now if I go back, around the other side, it's positive. And we were actually right. The negatives are to the left and the positives are to the right, okay? So now we have a, a look at value that we can actually use to drive that blend space that we built. So now we're gonna go over to the animation graph and actually plug in our, our look at blend space and use this value, this, this variable that we just created to drive it and get our character to literally look at where the camera is facing, okay? So let's hit escape maximize this again and we're going to leave this uh as it is um and hop over now to the animation graph portion we're going to go here into our local or sorry our locomotion state machine that we previously built and we're working out of idle so we're going to go here into the idle now we're going to actually replace this idle po or this idle animation we had here now with our blend space that has all the look at's built into it so if we right click here and type look at blend we can hit enter and bring this in here and plug this in. Now this blend space obviously needs something to drive it. So we're gonna plug in our look at angle that we just created. We can just drag it right from our menu down here to the left and put it in there. Or you can right click and say, get look at angle and do it that way, okay? So now this is saying that our pose when we're in this idle state, our pose is actually gonna be this blend space as driven by our look at angle. Let's compile this and take a look at it in game. So when we play, our character is looking straight forward. 
But as we look around, our character actually turns and looks, okay? Okay, pretty cool, huh? Now, you see that snap there? That's because we have, um, that's, that's what's happening when the blend space crosses over from positive 180 to, to negative 180. We get the character kind of snapping around. We don't really want that to be so jarring. So what we can do is we can go back to our blend space and actually um, improve that a little bit by increasing the sort of like interpolate, or sorry, slowing down the interpolation rate of the blend space. So let's go over to the blend space and see if we can resolve that. And then I think we'll be in a pretty good place. So we'll go back here to the animations and open up this blend space. You can see that there is an interpolation time here in our blend space and it's set to zero. So basically it's saying like whatever value I get in, no matter how different it is from the one I had before, I'm gonna snap to it uh, in, zero in zero frame. So it's just like, boom, snapping there. Now this is interpolation uh, by time. So what we can do is we can just make this a little bit higher, maybe like, let's, let's just start trying some numbers. Let's try 0.1. We can kind of see this happen here in this. If we snap it back and forth pretty fast, it's still gonna be pretty fast. Maybe we wanna do like 0.2 or 0.3, maybe 0.25 would be good. We don't want it to be so slow that it feels laggy but we do want it to be slow enough that it kind of gets rid of that um, jar really jarring uh, uh, switcheroo that happens. So let's play again, see if this helps at all. So it's a little bit better, but it's still pretty a pretty big jump, okay? Let's try one more thing. We have this um, target weight interpolation. Uh, so this is, how fast you wanted to get to, you can kind of hover this and see what it says, um, how fast you'd like to get to the target for improved blending. So I don't know, I'm just gonna try like, let's see what doing it to five makes it pretty slow. Let's, let's up this a little bit. Um, you know, I'm just kind of trying out numbers here to see what gets us a good result. What if we make this one? I'm not quite sure. So this one's the smaller the number is, the slower it's gonna be down here. So maybe make this two. That's maybe a little bit too slow. Three, I'm just kind of shifting back and forth. That's starting to look pretty natural there, right? It's three, maybe four. Okay, let's give that a try in game and see if that helps. Now this might not be perfect. You know, this is a little bit of an experiment. There we go, that's a little bit more natural right? And it's still tracking through these portions uh, pretty well. And then when we snap across, it gives us a little bit of interpolation there, okay? So that actually looks pretty good. Now at this point, okay, we have some problems with our actual animations. Uh, I think I would now spend some time making sure that my, uh, uh, you know, my arm, this is, we're gonna move right into self critique time here. We can see that the arms kind of get a little bit awkward as we move around, particularly that left arm, there's like some weird rotation in there. Um, and then it kind of just comes up only in as it goes into the 120 pose. So uh, I think it would be valuable for me to actually kind of start bringing it up even as I go through that, that 90 degree pose, that left arm so that it blends a little bit more naturally. Uh, same thing with this sort of right arm you see here. I get like a little bit of weird blending there between between these two, excuse me, um, because of the way I'm moving it. There's also some weird weapon sliding that I'm gonna have to resolve there somehow. I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Maybe I'll cover how to fix that in the next video. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And it feels it feels like my character is, you know, sort of responding to me. And so each time I sort of run around and stop, after the stop finishes, my character is gonna start looking at wherever my cursor is, okay? So that's where we're gonna kind of wrap up with this one. Um, next time we're gonna talk about uh, another way to implement implement these look at using an additive approach. So I was worried about that weapon that was just kind of sliding around and floating when we uh, were rotating around our character. You see how the weapon is just kind of like floating out of the hand and it kind of bugged me. Why the heck was that happening? It just didn't seem right. It wasn't it wasn't doing that in our animations. Uh, so I poked around a bit and I figured it out and I didn't want to leave you in this episode wondering why that might be happening to you if you followed my instructions up to this point. So I'm going to quick show you how to fix it. Okay. The problem is, is that I actually, in a previous episode, told you to attach this thing to the wrong bone. 
It's actually it's attached to these kind of floating IK bones that are a uh, child of the root instead of the child of the hand. So when the hand's moving through space, it's kind of tracking it, but not quite. All I have to say, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so if we actually click on our character here, it's going to select the character controller, and we can go right over here to this button, Edit Blueprint. And if we open it in the Blueprint Editor, we're going to get our pawn, our character controller here, okay? So let's go to our weapon mesh over here, and we can see that this is attached to our IK hand prop. If we do a little search here and search for prop and attach it instead to our hand prop R, I believe, I believe this is going to fix our problem. So let's hit Compile, save this out go back here and play again. And I think now it's gonna follow the right bone and track with the hand. Look at that, just like our animations. So I just didn't wanna leave you hanging with that, you sitting there trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, if you just switch the which bone it's attached to, it's gonna save us a bunch of headaches down the road as well. So that's it for the fix on the weapon. And that pretty much wraps up this episode. Now you can see that we left off with something that still looks a little bit rough. And that's fine. This was our first stab at implementation. And that's one of the wonderful things about games is you can get that, that first version in pretty fast and see it all working together in game. And then you can spend the time afterwards sort of polishing it up once you've got all the functionality working. So I'll probably go back into this and I would encourage you to as well to try to iron out and really get those those poses to look like they blend really well together as you sort of move to the right and move to the left. As I said at the beginning, this is a great way to sort of make your character feel a little bit more responsive and uh, and, and really feel like they're, they're interacting with your cursor and your mouse as you move around the space. If you're looking for some sort of homework to do or something interesting to add to the project that uses kind of the same exact tactic, you could actually add the same exact functionality to your stop poses. You may have noticed that when I sort of stopped that my character just kind of looks dead ahead. And then only once we get into the idle do does the character start to look, look around actually. So what you can do is you can actually build a whole stop blend space of look at as well that's playing your stop while the character is looking in these different directions. And you could implement using the same exact techniques, build a blend space, and even use the same exact look at variable to drive that blend space in your stop animations. I might actually show what that looks like in the next, next episode if I have some time, um, but regardless, it might be a fun little project for you to add to your Unreal project to just increase the fidelity a little bit across the board. So that's it for today. Thanks for following along, and I'll catch you next time when we cover the additive version of this same thing. Happy animating. Catch you later.